Happy Monday Knitters. I'm Louise from Wildflower Wool and welcome back to my channel. This is an exciting episode. I have a couple of things brand new that we don't usually talk about on Mondays. So as always, I've got, well, most of the time always, I have a finish to show you. I have an update on last week's projects. I have two new starts for this week and I was challenged to do a fall challenge, kind of meet the podcaster. So I'm going to do that at the end of the episode. And the very last thing we're going to talk about is I thought it was high time that we did a little knit along on this channel. So let's start off always, as always, with my finished dishcloth. This one ended up being really fun. I wanted a Halloween themed dishcloth and I think I achieved that. So I guess it is goes this way. I cast on with the orange and I cast off with the black. So this is the tweed stitch dishcloth. I did this one back, I don't know, hmm, I don't know, a few months ago. And I think I did it in a pink and a yellow. And here it is in orange and black. Very Halloween-y if I do say so myself. It was fun to knit. I don't think I would necessarily say that this meets my criteria for being knit knife knit night proof because you do have to think a little bit about it and it is doing the knit one below stitch but it was pretty good by the time I got part way through I was in the rhythm and I didn't have to look at the pattern but it's a little more thinking required than some of the other simpler stitch patterns that I've turned into dishcloths I did not put an edging stitch on here because when I did this I just followed the pattern I had wrote out back whenever it was a few months ago and I did not put an edging stitch on there because at that time I was thinking more along the lines I just wanted you guys to have the basic stitch pattern knit it up into a dishcloth and have something that you could use and um anyway now I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to update that pattern and put a couple edge stitches on because it does curl a little bit, not a lot. And the edge just doesn't look super clean. So I'm gonna put an edge stitch or two, and maybe just one edge stitch, just to tidy it up a little bit. Had to laugh, um, was it last week or the week before? Oh my God, I'm, I'm, all the weeks are starting to run into one another. Did I tell you that I had, um, I had a comment that made me literally laugh out loud and she had said, Louise, you put way too much thought or you like stress way too much over your dishcloth. <laughs> and you know, you're probably right because it is just a dishcloth, but I'm thinking of this as more of a bigger picture as if, you know, we were to expand these into a blanket, an afghan, a scarf, and how would I want the edge treatment to look. Anyways, but look at the stretch on this as well. And I'm thinking that this is just kind of a characteristic of the knit one below. Because this is this is all knits. There is no purl stitches in here at all. So it's very much like garter. It's got that stretch. And look at this is only 39 stitches. And look how wide it is. I didn't measure it. I thought I would just wait. Any guesses? How wide do you think that is? Huge, huge. I know as I was knitting it, I was starting to think, man, this is almost looking like a, like a tea towel if I'd gone and made it nice. Oh, it is, it is. <laughs> it is 11 and a half inches. Okay, well, anyways, that was maybe a tad because that's like, you know, what did I say I was kind of aiming for? Seven and a half inches each way. And, uh, I'm at 11 and a half. I knew, well, I knew it was wide, but you know, whatever it's, you know, there's no certain size. You like them bigger, like them smaller. It is what it is. But I, I made a note that I would definitely not cast on this many again, because I don't need it really that wide. Take a few inches off it. And that would probably have been better, but it was fun. And I love the color and the texture of this. I really like it. It was fun. As always, it was fun. I probably, I don't know. 
I know I always come on here and say it was fun, it was easy, it was great, it was whatever, because they always are. And maybe that's because if I cast on and I started something that wasn't fun, maybe I just would uncast, <laughs> uncast it off, take my needles out and pull it out and start on something that was fun, right? Anyways, I liked it. And it's super Halloween-y. Look at that. Can you see it? We might as well look at it for a while, right? We'll just set it right there. So that was that. What else did it last week? I was working on hat number two. My, oh, I didn't give you all the detail. Well, you probably can guess. The dishcloth was knit out of Bernat Handicrafter. The orange was hot orange and black. It was the cone, this cone. I'm not sure if that was licorice or if it was another color. Licorice is the black Handicrafter. Um, cotton that's out right now. So I'm not sure if that's the same shade or if that was something different, but I know. black is kind of, well, I was going to say black is black, but black is not always black if you're trying to match it to something, is it? Anyways, we're not handicrafter. Next project update is this hat. So patterns, color wool, 100% wool. Remember I knit the, the other hat a few weeks ago? And I did it way too tight a gauge, so it's going to be super, super warm, but it was pretty stiff. I knitted it way too tight a gauge. So I am imp not improvised. I readjusted on this hat. I did, I bumped my needle sizes up. So I used the five and a half millimeter for the ribbing. I just did a one by one. I knit one pearl, one ribbing. I did a long tail cast on. And I didn't get, as you can see, I didn't get much done on this hat, mostly because I could not find larger size needles. I had the five and a halves to do the ribbing and it took me all week till I could find a six and a half. This yarn calls for a 6.5 millimeter needle and I could not find, I can until I started doing some sorting. This, this needle, I think, I believe this is a Haya Haya. It's got the light green cord on it. Um, yes, it says on here, Haya Haya. So it looks like it's a US 10 and a 6.5 millimeter. So I, when I did some, my yarn sorting video, I found this needle and it was on another hat project. And I thought that project, I thought, mm, yeah, I'm not going to, it was the one from Arna and Carlos's workshop when they came to Little Red Mitten last fall. And I thought, you know, I don't think I'm going to finish the actual pattern. I will do, I use the yarn and I'll, I will probably make it into another hat, but hey, I wasn't too concerned about actually making that pattern. So I just pulled it out. I grabbed the needle and put it on here. So I was able to finish off my last round using the smaller needle. I increased the number of stitches that I wanted to increase to evenly around. And then I switched to the larger needle and now I'm just working knit round and round and round for, what am I doing? Like seven and a half inches, something like that. And then I'll start decreases and then we will be able to next week compare it to the hat that I did before just to see the difference. This already, I've only have how many rounds? I was going to say I have like two or three rounds done, but I don't. I have one, two, three, four. I have, I think I have six, five or six done. So obviously I'm liking knitting on this way better because I've done a couple extra rounds that I didn't even realize that I had done. And it feels, it feels like it should. It feels, well, I don't want to say normal because that's, everybody is a little subjective, but it feels like how I want it to feel. It doesn't feel tight. It doesn't feel real loose. I think it's going to be great. So this is my second ball. I had joined, I had that little bit left over from the first hat. So I, you can't really see where I switch balls, can you? With the color, the stripes and all the colors and speckles and everything in there. I got almost, almost had the ribbing done. So I don't know, maybe somewhere around here, I switched balls and you can't tell, which is great. So hat number two. I will just keep working on this. I really want to get this done and I think I will. Now that I have the needle, I can just zoom around. Except now I'm going to have to find matching DPNs. Oh boy. 
<laughs> and you guys know it's not because I have a shortage of needles. It is just tracking them down. So, okay. Darn, here I thought I could just like whip this off and get this done tonight, but I'm gonna have to go on a needle search again. Uh, oh well. I'll improvise. We'll get it done for next week because I want to compare it. We'll see how. And did I tell you that I cast on a few num few extra stitches? The other, the first hat I knit fit nice, so I'm still kind of going, hoping for that same size. So bigger needles means my stitches are going to be bigger. If I'd cast on the same number of stitches, my hat would have been bigger. So I took out a few stitches. I do know that I don't have the right number for my decreases up at the top, so I'm going to have to fudge that a little bit. Well, that makes it fun. Okay, so that is that for hat knitting. What else? Oh, I worked on the project that I worked on the most this week was my scarf. My Karen Latte Cake Scarf. And I think I might almost have it finished. This feels so soft. Love it. I really, I really like this. And uh, a couple of podcasts that I've watched where people have used this, they basically had the same reaction. Is that, oh man, this is like, it's just, it is so silky and soft. It's so lovely. Okay. So this is what it is. Karen Latte Cakes, this big ball. And I still have lots, lots left. So this obvious is telling me that if I had cast on more stitches, like I would have, because you know, every time I pick up this, every time I pick up the scarf, which is, you know, listen to that gut feeling, because every time I look at it, every time I pick it up, I'm like, oh, I should put more stitches. It looks too skinny. And that like a thought like that always is the first thing that runs through my head every time I look at the scarf. So obviously I will have lots of yarn left that I could easily make my next one wider and with no fear of running out of yarn. But look at, I moved my stitch marker. Look, look how long it is. So I kind of stopped knitting on it because I wanted to measure, but I thought we would do that together. So there is my stitch marker. So I did all of this last week. All of that. I don't know. Well, I guess maybe that's not super live, but anyway, it filled my evenings of Netflix watching and doing some Zoom knit nights with some friends because this is the well, it's called uneven, uneven rib or, um, broken rib. There's two that are very similar, broken and uneven. We'll go with uneven. Why can't I think of what the word I want? Anyways, you guys will probably just, I'll be typing it in the comments, but look at that. Lovely. Okay. Now this is going to drive me crazy. If I think of the other word, I'll edit it in up here. Uneven, broken. There's one that is, I think broken. This is driving me crazy. So broken rib. There's one where you're doing knit two, purl two ribbing, and you do that for a couple of rows, then you do a plain knit row. I think that's the broken. And then there's uneven because this is off one stitch. <laughs> Anyways, okay, I'm rambling. You guys, you okay. guys, carry on, Louise, carry on. So I was gonna measure this. I'm hoping, I'm thinking I want it to be about 80, 88 inches, give or take a little bit. So let's see how far I have. I may surprise myself and be nowhere close, but it looks and it kind of feels like it's getting long enough. I don't want it to be too long. I tried it on when I was doing a knit night, virtual knit night with some friends. And because I thought at one point, I thought, oh, when I got to be about half the ball, I thought, you know, I could almost end this. Like if I was really, really wanting to try to get two scarves out of a ball, I probably could have, but it would have been, it would have felt a little skimpy in the length. So everybody decided, no, keep going, make it a little longer. Okay, there I'm at 60. 
but I also don't want it to be too, too long. And I'm not sure with this yarn how much it may grow. It may stretch a little bit. So 60. So there I'm at 70. I think I have <laughs> fuzzies floating around. 70. Okay, so I think I'm long enough. Oh, yeah. 70. 80. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I'm long enough. 90. Okay, this works out okay. So 97 inches. And 97 inches. Okay, so it's longer than I wanted it to be. But I was thinking I was going to have to pull some out. Anyways, now, am I being too picky? Well, I guess I could. No, this will work out all right. So see where I cast on here. I just have that little bit of that light gray. For some reason, and I don't know why, I was thinking, I just assumed <laughs> that when I started this ball, I started and I had a full color block. Because that's when I got over here to the end, I thought, okay, I'm probably getting close. And I thought, you know what, I should end with a full color block. Well, and then all of a sudden I thought, you know, Louise, you should really check that. And obviously I did not. So I started with this. So this is kind of why I stopped because I knew I was getting close and I thought, okay, do I finish this light gray and do a full light gray color block and then just do whatever this is, how many, a couple of inches, a few rows of the other color. And then, so it has a little skinny stripe on each bottom piece. But now that I've got extra length and, oh, did this actually even work? Are these the same shades? I think, I think they are. So really what I should do is I should pull out this bit so I end. It'll be gray. Can you see that? And pink. But then I can end with a little bit of gray on each end. Then it'll look like it matches, sort of. And it won't be quite as long because I'll, well, I mean, it's still going to be long. But I, let me try it on. Let's see. Take the tape measure off. Anyway, okay. See, I just need to talk out my, uh, well, not problems, but you guys are good listeners. And then, so I'll pull out a few rows. And it's going to be done. I'm just going to pull out a few rows. I'll cast off, weave in my two ends, and it'll be done. So let's see this. Okay. So if I wrap it again, okay. And see, look, see, there's like, look at the, there's enough stretch in there, but not really that, you know, you're not really going to be stretching your skirt. Actually, maybe. See, and that's why I wasn't too worried that it was going to be too skinny because by the time you wrap it around and you've got the tails, I don't think it looks too thin on. Does it? Okay. All right. So I don't have this quite even, but yeah. So it comes down. <laughs> that's not really set up to show you this, but it comes down to about my waist. So it's nice and long. I'll have to do, I'll cast it off, take the needle off, I'll finish it up and I will, I will, I'll take my, take my, uh, tripod out. I'll let my neighbors talk and roll their eyes and go like, there's that crazy woman again. <laughs> and I'll take a picture outside so you can actually see the length. I like it. And oh, it feels so, so nice. I'm thinking again, maybe I should keep this for myself, but it's got to go in the Christmas box. Boy. Yeah, this time of year is like full on Christmas mode thinking, right? I like it. So I've got, well, I haven't weighed it. So I've got under half a ball of this. So this was the Kissy Kissy colorway. So it's mostly shades of gray with kind of this little like blush pink in there which is pretty, pretty, even, I even think it's pretty and I'm not a pink 
a pink girl at all. And I think it's, I think it's really nice. I think my, hmm, I was going to say, I think my mom would like this, but she doesn't like long scarves. She likes just a short scarf that just comes across and just, you can just like this kind of length, just literally tuck it inside your coat and cross the ends over and put a brooch. Sometimes she'll put a brooch on it or something and wear it like that. Maybe there's enough left. Anyways, I've got two more balls of it over here on my chunky weight wall. One more is Kissy Kissy, and there's another one that's similar. It's shades of gray, but instead of the pink, I think it's got like a blue in there, which is really kind of subtle and pretty. So this is going to go back in my kitty bag, kitty cat bag. This was knit. <laughs> this was knit. This was sewn by my friend Cheryl from my needle crafts. And I love this bag. I've had it for a while, but this was, you know, can I tell you a secret? Is this, this was destined to be a birthday present for somebody and I bought it and then I couldn't part with it. It's linen fabric and I love, I just love, love the feel of it. And it's a perfect, look at that, that nice big ball of Karen cakes. It fits it great. Love it. Okay, so that was update on last week's projects. So this week's new cast-ons dishcloth. Because it is almost Halloween, I thought I'm going to keep up with the um, Halloween theme because it is Halloween. It makes me feel... <laughs> um, I don't know. Seasonal. Fun in the Halloween fallish kind of mode. And I still have yarn left from last week's dishcloth. Oops, I just lost my ball band. So Bernat Handicrafter, hot orange. I probably have less than half of this because that other one was so huge, but I'm gonna try to make this one a little smaller. So hopefully it all evens out. This is my cone. I've got a lot of black on there. Um, yeah, this always, every time I look at this, this reminds me of Caroline when she tells her story about her cone of black 310 DMC embroidery floss. Yeah. So anyways, I've got a lot. I don't know how many just cloths are left in there, but there's a few. And really I only use black at Halloween time. So I might as well do this one and maybe even another one for next week. So this is going to be a different stitch pattern. Again, I'm going back to a pattern that we did, I did earlier in the year. I'm using the rice stitch, which is also a knit one below pattern, but this one has both knits and pearls in it. So it's a little different. So I thought, this is my thought process, that because just the regular all knit stitches and knit belows created such a wide stretchy fabric. I cut back my stitches. Not a lot, maybe that was 12 inches, but I cut it back from 39 to 33. I still needed a multiple of two plus one. So I picked 31, 33, 33, I think 33. This also is done more in a rib instead of garter like this one was, this one's got knits and pearls, knits and pearls, knits and pearls, and then a plain knit row. So I'm hoping that that ribbing is gonna kind of pull it in a little bit too. And I don't end up with uh, a dishcloth that's almost a foot wide. So it's I think it's looking a little better already. And this is the back side, which is kind of cute. Did I show you? I don't think I showed you the back side of this one, did I? It's not reversible but it's just kind of a fun stripe, which I kind of, I kind of like the backside too. I like things that don't necessarily have a wrong side, right side, wrong side, all in the eye of the beholder, what side you like, right? So this is, this is this two color right stitch. And it is, I think this one is going to be easier because just off the top of my head, you know, you think, oh, well, this one should be easy because it was just all knits, all knit. But actually this one here, having the knit and the pearl, I think is going to actually make it easier. If I go back to my 
my category, um, kind of my rules, I set out to see if a dishcloth would be knit night proof. And this with having the pearl stitches in it, I think is going to actually make reading the stitches easier. So maybe they'll fit my criteria for knit night proof dishcloth. We'll see. Just give you one last look on the front side. I know there's not very, <laughs> I think I've got like two rows of the pattern done, but it's cast on and it started. So this is going to be my, you know, knit night. I think I need to find a Halloween maybe. Nothing scary. Nothing scary. I, I like family friendly Halloween movies. That's what I might need to do tonight and finish that dishcloth. The other new start. If you saw my latest part eight yarn organization, <laughs> I have no idea how many parts this is going to take to get this yarn room organized. And most people, I'm sure when I get this all done, they're going to be like, how in the world does it take so many so many parts to get a room done. Well, once you watch the videos, videos, you'll know why it's taking so much, so many videos and so much time, but I'm making headway and I found some yarn that I really, really liked. So I didn't even put it on its new shelf. I just immediately put it in a project bag. And I'm just thinking, I know I've had a couple of people ask me, they're like, you should do, pull it and show us all of the works in progress that you've got going still. Maybe that'll be next Monday. Maybe we'll do that. Pull it. And it would probably be good for me to pull it and just refresh because I'm sure there's some things in there that I would really like to work on. So maybe I'll just give us all a little refresher of what I've got on the needles. Noro. Do you guys love Noro? I love it. This is in my top five favorite yarns, probably. I would say for sure. I love Noro. I love, I mean, people, if you haven't knit with Noro before, if this is a new yarn for you, I'll tell you the, the reason that people love this or the reason I love it is the colors. There are long, long color stripes in this so if you were to knit a scarf you're going to get chunks of color not just one or two they're really long repeats and lots of times sometimes it depends but sometimes there's surprises in here you know it depends on how it's wound but like there's just different different shades so there's a little bit of a lighter gray down there anyways it's nice and the fiber content is always um they have, all, they have di different, you know, some of them are hundred percent wool. This is vintage. The name of this yarn is vintage. It's a 50 gram ball and it is 64% wool, 24% silk and 12% Angora. And it is really nice. Now I know I'm a girl who likes to wear lopi as a cowl you know I, I i know it does feel a little picky to me but it doesn't necessarily it doesn't bother me all that much i don't mind that rusticy feel this feels like cotton to me so if you're somebody who is a little more sensitive to wool maybe you would still um find it a little woolly i don't know but to me this has no itch to it at all so i'm gonna make a cowl out of this I found four balls. So what do I have here? There's no color color name to this. It's just, it's a number. I guess I could tell you the number. I'm not sure. This again has been in my stash for a while, right? So this could be, I don't know if they still make this colorway. Can I find the number? So they're suggesting, they're saying a four and a half to five millimeter needle, but I went up to a five and a half. color three, color three, if that helps you at all, if you're looking, see if you have it in your stash. Anyways, it's nice. It feels soft. I thought I'd make a cowl. I've got four balls of it and the cowl, I'm just going to do fairly simple. 
that's what I thought about because I thought with this yarn, I'm not going to do a pattern because it's going to get lost in the color and it's kind of like a, what do I want to say? I want to say heathered. Is that the right word I'm looking for? Tweety, heathery, like any kind of pattern is going to get lost in there. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to do a cowl. Just put some ribbing top and bottom and knit. Easy, relaxing, Halloween movie knit again. And just let the beautiful yarn do the work. Keep it simple. Just do <laughs> a, a short cowl, like not like an infinity scarf or anything. I'm not going to do it long and wrap it. I'm just going to make it a little short tube. I'm thinking about 11 inches tall. I'm just kind of going by doing my gauge to garment on this again, which I can show you. I've done, a, I've started a gauge swatch. And I'm just going to figure out what my gauge is and multiply. For, I know the diameter that I'm looking for around, do some math, and then that's going to give me the number of stitches that I want to cast on. Then I'll look at my ribbing. Um, because if you, if I end up with, um, I don't know, I'm just going to randomly pick 111 stitches. If I measure my gauge, you know, is so many numbers. I like to measure it over f four inches if I can. I'm not sure how wide this is. Four inches, the, the larger area you measure over and, oh, well, our Halloween dishcloth is now on the floor and divide it down to one inch. You get, a, you get a more accurate gauge. So I think that's some, some could be possibly one of the reasons, you know, sometimes people will say their gauge swatch lied to them. Okay, so I'm at five inches. So what I would do then is leave half an inch on either side and measure the middle four inches. And then I'll get a number, um, I don't know, 22. And I, I can't do math in my head. So these, that's, as, that's as far as I'm going to go with numbers. So I get 22 and divide that by four. And that will give me my stitch count per inch down to like a quarter or half a stitch or a quarter of a stitch. And then I'll multiply that by however round wide around I want it. If that number comes out, say 111 stitches. So an odd number. If I wanted to do a knit to purl to ribbing on the top and the bottom, that number I cast on, that 111, has to divide by four. Knit two, purl two. If 111 doesn't divide by four, which I'm guessing it's not because it's an odd number, you got to adjust that cast on number up or down. Whichever way, if you be fine with it a little snugger, go down. If you like it a little looser, add a couple stitches. So in the same, if you want it to be um, knit one, purl one, has to be a multiple of two, which there again, 111 has an, that extra odd stitch in there. So you would go down to 110 or bump it up to 112. There you go. There's a little lesson for today. So that's what I'm going to do. I will actually measure this. I'll probably knit it a little bit more. And I, I liked knitting this. I had to stop knitting on this to come upstairs here and record which is a good thing because that means I like the feel of the yarn and I like, and I like the way it's knitting up. I like the feel of it. I like the drape. I like the stretchiness. It doesn't feel super tight. I wanted something a little more loose and drapier when I was designing this. And I like this. Typically I always like to always test that. Do take another needle for a test run just to see because lots of times I think you know I think I might like this but if you don't have something to compare it to you don't really know for sure I mean unless you really know like that orange hat that I did last week right that was like as soon as you start knitting it you're like yeah this is too tight but sometimes it's always good to have something to compare it to and see which one you like the best of the best right um so I may do that you know that's kind of one of those things do what I say, not as I do, because I'm thinking, you know, I actually kind of like how this feels. I may just go with it. Just kind of, that's where I'm relying on some experience thinking, 
I'm pretty sure I don't want to go any smaller and I don't know as I want to go any bigger. If I was to try a needle size, I would go bigger because I want to try to stretch this yarn out. I'm hoping that this cowl will just take two of these balls and then I'll be left with two because I would think, I'm thinking I'd really like mitts if I can. So I would not go down a smaller needle size because I don't want to eat up more yarn because I want another project out of this, out of these balls. So that's my thought process on designing this. So, and because I'm knitting it, I will knit it in the round on this needle. Um, a large, this is only a 16 inch needle, a 24 inch could work for the size that I want. It might make it a little easier, but I'm pretty sure I can squeeze all the stitches on this 16 inch needle. But what I wanted to say is because I'm knitting it in the round, I'm just going to do stockinette in the round is all knit stitches. I want to make sure I do my gauge swatch the same way. So I could have done this on DPMs and put, I think, I don't know, however many stitches this is, I could have divided those out onto four DPMs and I could have worked my in the round, but then you still have to, but then it's in the round and it's only going to be half the width. So either way, however you knit in the round, you're going to have to cast on a lot more stitches, which is takes more time. So a way you can do it without actually knitting in the round is do what I call my cheater in the round gauge swatch. So it's like basically if you've done I-cord, this is what it is just with a larger number of stitches. You have to do it on a circular needle. So what I've done, okay, now this is backwards to me. I'm holding this so you can see it. I've worked across my needle and I've ended with my last stitch. So typically I would now turn it around and work back. I'm not gonna turn it around. I am going to slide my work back. Wait a second here. Where did I end? Here. So, <laughs> this isn't working so well trying to do it in reverse. But what you wanna do is you wanna have your working yarn at the opposite end. Normally, if I'm gonna start knitting here, if I've got my stitches slid up here on the needle point, and this is gonna be my first stitch to work, I'm gonna bring this around. You want your working yarn hanging here, right where you're gonna start working. This time we don't, we want it on the opposite end. So it's gonna to seem totally backwards. And you leave a long length of yarn and you just carry it and you hold it down here. So then you can put your needle in and your yarn is here, you can wrap it and you work and now you can knit across. And what it leaves you on the back are all these strands where you've pulled the working yarn from one end around to the other. So that way you're knitting a stock and net stitch. It's all knit stitches and there's no purling. So that's a way you can do this little cheater in the round gauge swatch. Because if you, now some people say their knits and purl stitches, there's no gauge difference, but I know mine definitely is. If you were to do a gauge swatch that you just knit flat in stockinette where you knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, measure your gauge and then cast on and you just knit round and round and round, your gauge can, can vary enough that it's going to make a difference. So this is a good way, a quick and easy little gauge swatch and hopefully, fingers crossed, you get an accurate measurement. So that is that, so it's a cowl. So I'm thinking just plain, simple, round and round, 11 inches. Um, haven't really decided how long I want to do my ribbing. I'm thinking not very, just enough to keep it from curling is what I'm looking at and be done. Keep it simple. Let the beautiful yarn do all the work and enjoy the colors. So that is this week's new start. I'm gonna to try to get the hat finished first though, before I get too carried away on this, because really I should be able to get a hat, that orange hat and this cowl done to show you guys next week. Sometimes I say that and then I think I end up jinxing myself and then something else comes up and I'm hoping every day this week to get more shelf organizing done in here and to get a video up every day this week. That's my hope. 
there again. I hope I just haven't jinxed myself. Um, okay, that leads us to um, podcast challenge. It's going to be fun. This is fun. I don't think I've ever done one of these before. So I had to, I just quickly wrote down the question. There was Nadine from The Old Crow. I've watched um, the last few of her podcasts and it's fabulous. She knits with Karen Cakes as well. So I was like super excited to see some of the shawls that she did um, in her last po in her last podcast. I think there was one was knit. I think one was crocheted and she made up her own pattern. So I suggest if you're looking for another knitting podcast, go over there and find Nadine, the old crow on right here on YouTube and check out what she's working on. She did some, she, she had some sewed, so oh, I shouldn't tell you cause you're going to go watch it. Right. Anyways, go check out what she sewed. So this is just some questions just to get to know me a little bit better. Well, if you want to answer along with me down in the comments, I'd love to know what your answers are to each of these questions. Okay. Question one, apple cider or hot chocolate? Can I answer both? Because both, if anybody who knows me in person, you know, I don't drink tea or coffee. I drink <laughs> apple juice or hot apple cider or cold cider and hot chocolate. Both of them are right there at the top of my list. Um, Thanksgiving or Halloween. If I had to choose one, I would go Thanksgiving. If I had to decorate for, I don't know. I really like them both. I don't know. You guys know me. I like any excuse to be festive and decorate. And But if I could only pick one, it might be, it might be Thanksgiving because I love decorating outside with fall mums and pumpkins. Um, yeah. So I think I'd go, th I think I'd go Thanksgiving. And what word do you say? Do you say autumn or do you say fall? I say fall all the time. I don't even know. We talked about this on the Fiber Friends Friday night, uh, live knit night a couple of weeks ago. I asked this question because I had, I had watched Nadine. And, uh, so I asked people, what do you say? And it was kind of half and half and, but well, maybe fall kind of went out. Anyways, I definitely say fall. Okay. So what do you like? Do you like tricks or do you like treats? Again, there again, if you know me, you know, I'm going to say treats. <laughs> I'm all about the food. Um, okay. Oh, what do you like better? Carving a pumpkin or pumpkin pie? I, I do both. I don't do carving pumpkin very well. So I would say pumpkin, make a pumpkin pie. I would do that. There again, it's food. <laughs> what do you like better? A haunted house, a hayride, haunted hayride, or a haunted corn maze? I like, oh, see, and you know, that makes me think I said Thanksgiving, but Halloween is really kind of, it's fun too. So maybe I can, can I say both again? Can I go back and change my answer and say both? Haunted house. Um, are you talking a haunted house like you do at the fair where you like you walk through the haunted house and there's like stuff jumps out at you? I don't know. I like them all. But you know what's really intriguing? If I, if I could do one right now, the haunted corn maze sounds kind of exciting. Favorite Halloween candy. Typically it's chocolate bars and the rockets. The little sugary candies. I do love those. I do love those. I would have to stop myself from buying a bag of those. I guess if I was going out for right now, and if I was, I would be rockets. I would buy a bag of rockets. <laughs> do I shop on Black Friday? Nadine, when you answered this, I like literally laughed out loud at your answer. Um, no, and I do not shop on Black Friday. Are you kidding me? The sales? Oh my God. The people, like the people. I mean, I'm fine with the sale. You guys all know I like a good sale, but the people, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what would get me to go shopping on Black Friday. And Black Friday is, well, always used to be an American thing, right? Black Friday is your day after, is the Friday after your Thanksgiving in November. Um, 
it never used to be a Canadian thing, but the last few years, because we are so close to the border, we are within driving distance. And a lot of Canadians make the drive over, like either leave in the middle of the night or go the next, you know, the day before and get a hotel and spend the, the night and make it, you know, a big thing to go shopping. And, and I guess even the, the deals are good enough that with the exchange rate, you're still saving money. Or maybe it works out to the same. Maybe it's just a girl's weekend away. I don't know. But it does not interest me at all. And here, the malls and stores here have started doing Black Friday sales to entice people to stay here and do shopping here. I don't do those sales either because just the thought of, like, even braving the parking lot, just, no, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Okay, what's my favorite thing about fall? I love the colors. The colors, I love hiking. I like the weather's cool down. I love going for walks through the forest and seeing all the fall colors. Um, okay, what do I hate about fall? Well, the fact that winter follows it. <laughs> is now the only good part is that I guess fall is that means Christmas is coming, but yeah snow and cold. I like to garden. I like to go to the beach. You can't do either of those in the fall or the winter. So yeah, winter. That's what I don't like about fall because it's, it's, it's leading us right into winter. Um, oh, something about dress, dressing up. Is it either means do you dress up or what you, what's your favorite thing to dress up as for Halloween? I don't ever actually dress up as anything, but if I am home and if I am handing out candy, I do, I will, or if I'm working, um, and it's, and it's like during the week, I will wear, like, just go to the dollar store and find like a really fun mask, just one, you know, that covers your eyes with feathers or something or a fun, a hat or something. Um, so I don't actually dress up as anything, but I will just do something to be fun. So that's that. So I'm going to see, I'm going to tag my friend Jill from the Fiber Floozy and I'll also see Caroline if she has done this challenge and maybe the girls at Little Red, the Little Red Mitten podcast, see if they want to chime in on uh, their take on some of the things about fall because it is kind of fun to do. So thanks Nadine for, for sending this to me because I hadn't heard about it before. So it is, it is kind of fun to think about it. Okay, knit along. This podcast is getting really long. <laughs> I always like to try to keep these between 20 and 30 minutes and we are way over that. Okay, knit along. I have not done a knit along. I don't know if I've ever done one on my Wildflower Wool channel. We've done some over with the Fiber Friends podcast. We've done lots of them there. So I thought, you know what? I think we should do one here. So the challenge is, it's just going to be little and quick. It's going to start today and go through for the next two weeks to Halloween night. So October 31st. And I just thought because, you know, I'm in the mood to do Halloween dish hauls, that is what the challenge is going to be. My thought was to see how many people, if you want to do orange and black, but I don't think we'll leave, limit it quite down to orange and black. Anything, we'll open it kind of anything that's Halloween colors, even fall colors. So, you know, rust, greens, browns, black, whatever you want to do. It can be one color. It can be two colors. I, well, I, yeah, it can be one or two. A fall color, Halloween color. Um, I thought I had this all figured out and now I think, oh, I hadn't thought about it being one color. I was, I guess because I am just in the mode of doing two color, I was thinking doing two color, but you know what? As long as it's fall, it's Halloween. So that means no pink, no baby blue, but if it's, you know, any autumn, anything like this, anything like this, yellows, reds, greens, um, don't make it look too Christmassy though. Um, it can be a single color, it can be two color, it can be any pattern you want. I will type out the pattern. Actually, I'm gonna fix the, the one that fell on the floor, the tweed stitch. If you like this, 
this is in my Ravelry shop that I am going to, hopefully by the time you watch this, I'm going to pop over there and I'm going to update. Um, I'm going to cut down the stitch size and the cast off. When I was casting this off, I thought, hmm, I need to do this a little different. So I'm just going to go over and tweak that. So if you've already downloaded it or it's already in your Ravelry library, I will update it and then I will send you an updated copy to update your pattern library. And if you haven't gotten it, you can go over there and you can do this. You can do this in a couple different colors, green and yellow, green and orange, I don't know, whatever. So, um, and it only takes a couple of nights to do a dishcloth. Then go over to Wildflower Wool's group on Ravelry. Wildflower Wool has a very lonely, kind of forgotten about group over there. It hasn't been used in a really long time, so I thought this would be a good time to get it up and running again. I will open up a thread there. Um, I'll, I'll open up two. As you know, as per usual with knit alongs, I'll open up uh, a chit chat thread and I will do one that has no comments, but you can just post your pictures. So you can post as many times. Every picture of a finished fall dishcloth will put you in the running for a prize. And the prize is going to be, I'm gonna pick one winner and that one winner is going to get two colors of dishcloth cotton. This is, you know, everybody asks me what my favorite dishcloth cotton is and I'm like, well, I like I love this cotton. I really like Dishy, but maybe I'd have to say this is my favorite because this is what we have. Dishy and I love this cotton. We have to order from the U.S. from Knit Picks or pick it up at Hobby Lobby. This is what our Michaels and Walmart have for Nat Handicrafter. I like it. Um, so there's two balls for the winner. Whoever gets, I will pick a, pro, a prize winner. Um, towards the end of Halloween night. So I'll close the thread, nine o'clock-ish kind of thing after trick-or-treating is done, and I will draw a winner and I will post it. And you will get, I will send you these two balls because I'm thinking that we will probably just do this again at Christmas. So if you like knitting dishcloths, this will give you two balls to uh, get started on a dishcloth or two. This will make you two if you put two Two colors, you'll get two, or do one red and one green. Anyways, that's that. So head on over Wildflower Wool on Ravelry. Let me know if you are interested in joining and start knitting a fall-themed dishcloth. Post some pictures when you're done, and it'll be quick, it'll be fun, and just get you in the Halloween spirit a little bit. I think that is it. I think that is all I had to talk. This should be all I've had to talk about because this is almost an hour. <laughs> well, I hopefully you've grabbed your knitting and you got lots of knitting done. You could have a dishcloth half done by now. Okay, everybody, I will see you in the next video. I will be back next Monday with two new starts and hopefully a couple finishes. And I hope to see you almost almost every day, hopefully every day this week, as I work through some more yarn sorting. So have a fantastic night, everybody. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.